After coaching over 300 real estate investors from around the country, I've been able to identify what causes some wholesalers to be wildly successful, while on the other hand, what causes other wholesalers to fail and stay stuck in their business. So in this video, I'm gonna break down the top three reasons why wholesalers fail to grow their business. Let's dive in. Hey, what's going on? If you're new to this channel, my name is James Hodges, and this channel is all about documenting my best practices that I have found in scaling up my wholesaling company from ground zero to multiple seven figures, and the best practices that I have found in helping dozens of wholesalers and house flippers around the country scale their businesses to multiple six and seven figures as well. So in this video, I wanna talk about the top three reasons why most wholesalers fail to grow their business. So. I've been very blessed and fortunate to be able to coach over 300 wholesalers and house slippers around the country in all different kinds of markets. And after coaching so many people around the country, you start to pick up on the trends and you start to notice certain traits, certain habits, certain practices that successful wholesalers have and certain traits, habits, practices that unsuccessful wholesalers have. Because at the end of the day, all of the people that I work with they all have access to the same information. All of them, all of them have access to the same information. All of them start in different places, but they all have access to the same information, yet some are significantly more successful than others. And we see this in so many different areas in life. While many people have access to the same information, there are some that get outsized results. There are some that get significantly better results than other people. and. Uh, it's it's pretty fascinating, and I, and I started to really pay attention to what was it, what what were the traits that caused those people to be successful, and also just as importantly, uh, what were the traits that caused people to struggle and caused people to stay stuck and prevented people from being able to scale their business. So I want to talk about those those things that I've identified that are the top reasons why wholesalers fail to grow their business because if we can identify those, then we can identify what we don't need to do. We can identify what we need to do the opposite of. And a lot of the times, if we can identify what we don't need to do and we do the opposite, that will ultimately lead to success. But we need to understand where the pitfalls are so that we can avoid those traps, so that we can avoid the pitfalls. So reason number one why most wholesalers fail to grow their business is unrealistic expectations. This is by far one of the most common reasons why I see people fail to grow their wholesaling business is that they just have wildly unrealistic expectations of what's actually required from them to be able to really grow a business. And most people, when they start wholesaling, they don't have any background in real estate, they don't have any background in building a business, and Honestly, guys, I didn't have any background in growing a business. I didn't have any background in real estate. And uh, I was very fortunate to be able to join a mastermind where I was able to get around other seven-figure business owners. And so I was able to learn what to expect when growing a business. In the very beginning, I did not have the proper expectations. But very early on in my career, I was able to get, get into a mastermind and get around other seven-figure business owners. But some of the most common areas where I see unrealistic expectations around, number one is the marketing. And the marketing, for most people, it requires way more marketing to get deals than what people expect. To give a couple of examples, in SMS marketing, for instance, the average number of text messages that it takes to get a deal is around 15 to 20,000 text messages per contract. This is taken from uh, the averages that I've seen over hundreds of real estate investors. These are averages. A lot of people do better, but the averages that I see are 15 to 20,000. Now, if you go in with the expectation that it's going to take 20,000 text messages to get one deal, then whenever you send 5,000 text messages, you aren't gonna be disappointed. But so often I see wholesalers that start SMS campaigns and they they pull a list of 1,000 people and they send 100 text messages a day and after sending 5,000 text messages, 
They are disappointed that they don't have deals. And the reality is they just didn't have the right expectation of what was required to get a deal. They had improper, unrealistic expectations. You see this in almost every marketing channel as well. You see this in cold calling. You see this in direct mail. You see this in pay-per-click advertising. You see it when people are trying to drive for dollars. They'll put 30 houses on their list and they'll call 30 people and then they're disappointed that they don't get a deal and they're wondering why they aren't scaling their business. And so uh, unrealistic expectations is absolutely one of the top reasons why I see um, wholesalers failing to grow their business. And you know, you see this in other areas of the business as well. You see unrealistic expectations of um, how many offers they need to make, how many uh, hours they need to put into the day, how many leads they need to talk to. You see unrealistic expectations of when they start putting their team together, if they start bringing on people, how much work actually goes into properly managing people and how much intention they need to put into managing people. But unrealistic expectations is one of the top reasons why people fail to grow their wholesaling business. Honestly, it's one of the top reasons why people fail to grow any business. And if you read the book, if you wanna really tackle this mindset of unrealistic expectations, there's a fantastic book by Grant Cardone. Shout out to Grant Cardone. Uh, it's called The 10X Rule. Most of you guys have probably heard of The 10X Rule. If you haven't read the book, go read it. If you have read it, it's worth a read again because The 10X Rule, uh, the way that Grant describes The 10X Rule is basically take whatever you ex whatever you think is required to be successful and multiply that by 10 and th that's what you need to execute. Whatever you expect is required to be successful. So if you, in your mind, you expect to have to send 10,000 text messages to get one deal, then change your mindset to expect to send 100,000 and be prepared to send 100,000 texts to get one deal. Now you go in with the proper expectation that I'm going to put in absolutely what's required to get, to, to be successful, absolutely what's required to get deals and there's no chance I'm going to leave myself short. And if we can just adopt this mindset, you know, it's such a, an incredible philosophy, the 10X rule. It truly is. If we can adopt that mindset of expecting that it's going to be 10 times harder, it's going to expecting that it's going to take 10 times more volume, I guarantee that you're going to be more successful than if you go in on the flip side and expect it to be 10 times less than what's actually required. Uh, and for most of us who are watching this video, Grant Cardone has, has made more money than probably all of us who are watching this video combined. So he obviously has some traits and uh, some practices that have made him successful. And I think it's always important to learn from those who are far more successful than us or far, far further ahead in any respective industry than us. So that's the first thing that I see that prevents people from being successful in their real estate wholesaling companies. The second thing that I see preventing people from uh, being able to scale a real estate company or that causes them to fail to grow their business is having a solo mindset. And this, this comes to surface in a couple of different ways. Number one is the DIY mentality of, I'm gonna do it myself, I'm gonna figure this out myself. That is an absolutely crippling mindset if you're wanting to scale a business any business, but particularly a wholesaling company, because it is the slowest way to scale any business. The fastest way, if we look on the flip side, is to find out uh, what's already working and let's go plug into what's already working, as opposed to trying to figure out how to do anything by ourselves. Uh, when I was growing my real estate company, the very first thing that I did was buy a course to show me all of the ins and outs of wholesaling. And then once I bought that course, I implemented everything that I saw in the course, then got my first three deals by implementing what I saw in the course. Once I closed those first three deals, then I joined a $25,000 per year mastermind so that I could get access to people who already had seven figure businesses. That was my goal was to have a seven figure business. So I wanted to be able to tap into 
the knowledge that other people had available because they had already built a seven figure business. I didn't want to try and figure this out on my own. And that's why I was able to go from ground zero to building a seven figure company in one year, ground zero to $1.1 million in my first 12 months. The only reason why is because I was able to learn from other people who had been ahead of me and who had already accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. And so the DIY mentality absolutely cripples so many people. And then also the uh, solo mindset cert comes to the surface, even with people who have already done deals, even with people who have paid for mentorship or coaching or masterminds, I see it come to the surface in, I have to do everything myself in the business. And this is this will cripple a business from being able to grow because you as one person are completely limited. You only have 24 hours in a day, but your attention, your abilities are limited to just you. And if you look at another person who says, I don't have to do everything myself, I'm going to leverage as much as I can to other people, then that person now has one person who spends eight hours per day cold calling. They have another person who spends eight hours per day um, doing lead management and qualifying leads and setting appointments. So for eight hours a day, they're scheduling appointments. You think that that person who does one thing, who has one focus for eight hours a day, is going to be able to schedule more appointments than a solo person who has to take care of all of the responsibilities of business? You better believe it. They're going to be able to, to run circles around somebody who has all the responsibilities of running a company. And then we look at acquisitions as well. If one person, if you have an acquisition rep and their one responsibility is going out and signing contracts, they're going to be able to do more contracts than the business owner who is running around taking care of all of the responsibilities. So the solo mindset is the number two reason why I see wholesalers failing to grow their business. And then number three, and this is one of the most important ones, especially in the beginning, especially for wholesalers who are trying to get their business off the ground. And the third reason it, that I see wholesalers failing to grow their business is they don't develop new patterns or routines. And what I mean by that is we all start this industry. Most of us, before we start this industry, we are working jobs. We've got some kind of employer that we're working for. And now we are starting a new venture. We're starting a new industry. And this new venture requires us to develop different skill sets. It requires us to show up as a different person than the person that we showed up for our W-2 job. If you are a teacher, you cannot show up the same way that you show up as a teacher. You can't apply those same skill sets, those same patterns, those same routines to a wholesaling business and expect to be successful. And so when we are transitioning from working as a W-2 job or working for another employer to becoming our own business owner, our own boss, we have to develop new patterns and new routines. So now we have to hold ourselves accountable. We don't have anybody who's holding us accountable. We have to set our own schedules. We have to learn what we need to implement every single day on the job. Nobody's creating that schedule for us. Nobody is creating the agenda for us. And so I see uh, a lot of people that don't develop these new routines. They don't develop these new patterns. They don't learn how to become their own boss and they don't learn how to transition from being an employee to being a business owner. And it is a completely different mindset. It's a, a completely different identity stepping from an employee to, an, to a business owner. It is a different identity. And with this new version of ourselves, we have to bring new routines, new patterns, new beliefs, new mindsets. How we show up every day is different than the person that we showed up as an employee. And so uh, there are so many different routines and patterns that that will hold us back if we try to bring them into the business world. And so the fastest way to learn how to develop these new patterns and these new routines is to get around other people who are business owners who have already developed 
these patterns, these thought patterns, these routines, and plug into a community that has other business owners in it. Because this bridge is one of the hardest bridges that I see people trying to cross. And that's the, the bridge from employee to business owner because they're different identities that we show up with. And so that's the third thing that I see that keeps people stuck, that prevents people, prevents wholesalers from being able to grow their business. And so if we can tackle these things and we can do the opposite of what causes these wholesalers to be stuck, then most of the time we're gonna be able to grow a lot faster in our businesses. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please click the like button, please click the subscribe button. If you wanna be notified of other videos that I'm gonna be bringing to this channel, I'll post three videos per week. So if you are uh, enjoying the content that you've seen on this channel, click the like button and the subscribe button so that you can see more content when I release it. 